Hey guys, what's up? It's Crotted9TCG here with my Dark Warrior Zombie deck. I wanted to go ahead and give this like a deck a shot because it looked fun and interesting and I always like the zombie archetype, so why not give it a shot? This is my personal build to it and I'll show you some combos in another video. Let's go ahead and show you guys what we have in the main deck and I'm gonna go ahead and not just show you guys monsters, spell traps, but show you the engines I'm running to make it easier. So for the Dark Warriors, we have the obvious 3 Armageddon Knights, uh, Sends from Deck, so good. Uh, 3 Dark Greffer, Sends from Deck, so good. Uh, and 3 Malicious, uh, 2 free Spinal Summons, that's kind of it. Uh, this is the Dark Warrior engine that I'm running, and you know, really good, really neat. Can't can't really see this staying on the next band list, like this has to get hit somehow, right? Like, right? Somehow? So that's the Dark Warrior portion of this. Uh, following that, we have the Zombies, which makes this deck insane. Three Mezukis, because he can literally revive anything in your graveyard because of Zombie World, making everything a zombie. One Gozuki, because kind of the backup plan, he's kind of like your Armageddon Knight for Zombies, really good. One Solitaire and one Uni Zombie, because this can trigger off Firewall by tributing, special summoning, and then Firewall special summon because he left the board. Insane, it's actually so good, but I wouldn't run more than 1-1, one, one, uh, honestly. Uh, even Gozuki, I wouldn't run two of, you just don't need it enough to where it's a big deal. One Goblin Zombie, because once you link him away, you add a Mizuki to hand, or a Zombie to hand, like anything, essentially. Uh, really good for extensions, and all that later. Uh, one Necro World Banshee, because she's your Zombie World summon. Really good, really nice to have a quick effect on that. And she can be summoned Armageddon Knight as well if you have the extra resources or brought with Goblin Zombie. And then one Doom King because uh, if you want to prioritize Bomber Dragon, you can end up you can end with a full board including Phoenix and Cerberus and two Mermaids and everything. But if you want to prioritize Bomber Dragon, you'll leave the Cerberus spot open, get him out, and they'll discard two more cards from their hand on their standby phase. So it's just a backup. Again, I wouldn't run more than one of these. Um, I've seen people run two of each, it just doesn't make sense, right? Uh, this deck's whole purpose is to extra link. Uh, if you want to play the pure zombie version, which is a stun variant, uh, then you play more of, but in an extra link deck, you don't. And obviously the two zombie worlds for, you know, your Banshee. Or if you have one to hand, if you have one to hand already, Banshee becomes kind of useless, you don't need to bring her back at all. So you can leave um, these two, you know, like activate one from hand and the other one is just there. You don't need the Banshees at that point. Uh, she's useful for other things though. Uh, two Ancient Cloak because I prioritize getting these three to my hand as soon as possible. Uh, just getting at least one and any other warrior is like, so good. And yeah, so banish this guy, get him out, then bring that out. It's good for firewall loops as well, and it's always good to have extra monster resources in themselves in the hand uh, when you start firewall, firewall looping, because you can lose all your monsters very fast if you don't manage your resources. Uh, next, because I don't like the danger archetype in decks right now, um, I'm going with the Gokis still. I'm running one Suprex, one Twist Cobra, one Headbat, two Octo Stretch, and one Rematch. Um, I don't think two Rematch is a good idea, you're not running enough Gokis, and I like two Octo Stretch because I like the idea of having a backup for Isolde. It's not just, you know, make Armageddon it or whatever. Like, I like having. Um, Octo Stretch there, just in case of anything. And Goku Rematch because uh, once you start Firewall looping, Link 1 away, add 1. Link 1 away, add 1. Link 1 away, add 1. Link 1 away, add Rematch. Bam. You have 4 targets. And that's really good. So that's my Goku little engine. Uh, next I play the Extenders, which is 3 Junk Forward. Uh, just free. Free stuff, easily. Um, next, something that I don't see people playing, but I think is really good just because of it being a Warrior and a Special Summon, potentially. Uh, to to uh, Super Agent. Uh, I get the reason why you don't want to run him, but because you play so many extenders, even having like junk forward and then normal summoning this guy out is good enough, honestly. Um, but the potential to have an extra special summon is just too good not to take up the, the chance. But again, like I said, it's not just uh, it's just not just a super a special summon requirement. Even if you have to normal summon him, it's usually fine, and he gets rid of back row in case you're going second. Uh, one. Dolphin because I would like to see their hand and one Ibley because again uh, required no matter what I'm actually de I was debating on trying two out it just made, made no sense and um, Aqua Dolphin because I need to see their hand if I'm starting first and if I open up with this one of 
or if I bring it out with a soul day, I am usually pretty happy to know like, oh, they don't have an Ash Blossom for later, or a Ghost Ogre, or a Cyframe, whatever. So, just good to have. Uh, the equips, uh, I'll explain this really quick because I know some people might be like wondering, like, where's one specific card? Uh, DDR because you're going to be banishing a lot. Living Fossil because in the scenario where you have a graveyard, it's sometimes good to have it. It's also not bad. Uh, Overdone Barrel because you can discard Mali in, the, in some scenarios or Meizuki. Uh, Moon Mirror Shield because if I open up with this and another equip in my hand, that really kills my combos. It's always good to just equip it to a monster, link them away, activate this to put it back in the bottom of your deck or top, it doesn't matter, and then you Soul Day to send. It, it just, it's just too good not to use. And also you can just beat down people. It's kind of funny sometimes. And one Phoenix Blade because it's a requirement and I'm still surprised this isn't banned. It keeps coming back whenever there's a warrior meta. Uh, next we have the one of one Foolish Burial because we want to get Mali or Meizuki out. Uh, Monster Reborn because obvious. Upstart Goblin. I want to prioritize the extra card. I just, I, even at a 60 card deck, just giving them a thousand life points isn't bad because I can just extend my combos for, high, for you know, who knows how long. Uh, game Charge which is still somehow not banned, I don't get how. Uh, reinforcements, because everything's a warrior, you have nothing to lose. You have so many options actually with reinforcements, it's actually really nice. Uh, three instant fusions, because I play the one Raiden. Um, again, I just want to see it. It's a once per turn, so even if you open up with two, you just discard it later for fodder uh, for your mermaid. And then two call by the graves, because you know two out of whatever amount of cards this is, is makes sense, right? Uh, let's do a quick rundown for how many cards this is. Three. 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48, 51, 54. Four, 54 cards. You can easily take away 4 cards as well if you really want to run uh, this deck a bit differently. Uh, I know not everyone's going to be running the same ratios and everything, but here's what you can take out if you would like to. Uh, you can take out one Octo Stretch, he's not a big deal uh, to take out. You can take away the two Super Agents if you really want to. And I know people cutting out Dolph uh, Dolphin, but he's just too good to not not to keep in. But if you want to run 50 cards, this is what you would take out. I don't recommend it though, but again, I know some people don't want more than 50 or more than a certain amount. Uh, extra deck time, two Mermaids. So this is the Nightmare stuff for obvious reasons. Two Mermaids, one Cerberus, two Phoenix, and one Unicorn. Uh, you can bump this up to two. Uh, later on, we have an underclock taker here. You can take this away, put it in the second Cerberus. Um, it just depends on where you want to start your board and how you want to start your board. Uh, I know people who run uh, two one or two one. It depends. Uh, but two mermaids is a requirement. The unicorn is a requirement. I would say two phoenix is a requirement, and then this is up to you if you want to play one or two. But one is still a definite no matter what. Uh, following that, we have one is Day, one Summon Sork, because these are the most broken cards in the game right now, and yeah. I, congrats, Europe, you're getting them soon. I can't wait for you guys to break the boards again. Uh, Link Rebo, because um, I do run the Octo Stretch, and it's not terrible in case of a scenario where you mess up your combo and you want to have the extra Link Zones, uh, you can always Octo Stretch it out and use the old combo. This is a super backup strat. I just have the 15 spot for free, so I threw in a Link Rebo. Otherwise, you could take a Link Rebo out or a Underclock and put in the second Cerberus, but again, I value the, the backup plan. One proxy, you can make Binary Sorceress. Uh, this shouldn't be staying on your board for more than like a minute. Uh, unless you're going second, then you could put a Binary Sorceress and then, you know, do the swap around. I just value the protection more in this version of a deck. It's not an OTK deck. It can OTK, but that's not the purpose. That's why we don't run like Portal Sword. Uh, one under clock because again, uh, sometimes you mess up your combo and you need to put it here. Uh, the two mermaids sometimes don't work out. Sometimes you need to get rid of um, uh, a resource to get another special summon to get more resources. Um, but again, I, I would cut this out for a second third risk, honestly. Uh, one try gate because he's in Gations. You can play two in this deck. I don't like the idea of it though. I feel like you're losing more resources in the process. But again, you can easily take out the under clock because I put a second try gate. Combo still goes out. Um, but Gumblar Dragon, kind of requirement in this deck. Firewall because busted and then the Raiden. Uh, the side deck doesn't really matter. It depends on your locals or your regionals or your YCS and what's in the meta right now. But this is my personal one. I use this one almost generically for every deck that's going first or going first only deck because I want to prioritize on getting my board set up. 
uh, two Gamma Seal, so obviously going second, three Ash, obviously going second, two Ogre, you can play three if you want, two Draws, uh, you can play three if you want, depends on you, uh, three Twin Twisters, I don't like back row, and three Red Reboots, because I don't like Optic Ace. Uh, that's it for this deck profile. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, concerns, whatever, uh, feel free to comment them down below. I'll have a combo video up very shortly if you guys want to check that out. And I will also be having a video for my Invoke deck and my Invoke Prank, Star uh, Prank Kids deck. Uh, I'll be making a video about this soon, so make sure you check out that video for the combos. Take care, guys.